So to investigate the chicken gut, we've been taking largely uh, culture independent approaches. So generally in microbiology, people, particularly in bacteriology, people try and grow things on agar plates. The problem with that approach is that it only recovers a small fraction of the organisms that are living in that environment. And so we have to go beyond that. So we are doing a bit of culture, but we're mainly relying on, on sequence dependent approaches. So we extract DNA from the uh, contents of the chicken gut and then we take one of two approaches. We either look for a molecular barcode, which is present in all bacteria, and we try and amplify and extract that from that uh, population, and that gives us a kind of census of the population, of uh, a profile of what's living there. We actually also do what we call metagenomics, where we're just sequencing that DNA en masse. And so that allows us to recover genome level information on many of the inhabitants of the chicken gut, particularly the most abundant inhabitants. We can get effectively genome sequences through that approach. And what that allows us to do is then reconstruct the, the metabolic pathways that those organisms are using, how nutrients are being cycled and recycled through that gut community, uh, largely to the benefit, we hope, of the chicken. Um, but sometimes understand, we will have the chance to understand disease states and where things don't go so well. The chicken food industry is a massive industry and if you can achieve uh, improvements of only a few percent in the growth rates of chickens and the final weight that they reach uh, in their efficiency of producing eggs these have uh, tremendous effects on, on you know, economic effects and, uh, and, and in terms of food security when we're going to have to feed 9 billion people squeezing more out of these food systems is, is crucial. So that, that's motivating us. In years gone by people used to use additives in the form of antibiotics to the chicken diet and that did produce uh, the increased growth rate. They acted as growth enhancers. But they've been uh, banned in most of the developed world now. And so what we'd hoped to do is to try and work out what went on when antibiotics were used to give that growth advantage and see if there are other ways in which you can manipulate this microbial community because the antibiotics almost certainly having their effect primarily by manipulating that microbial community. If we can reconstitute that effect but without using antibiotics that might then have deleterious effects in selecting antibiotic resistant organisms that then get into the human food chain or into human health. The main interest in the chicken uh, gut community in terms of human health is it's a, a, a reservoir of human pathogens. Campylobacter is probably the most important one, but Salmonella is also very important. There are some multidrug resistant organisms we see in hospitals, uh, Pancomycin resistant enterococci, where sometimes the finger's pointed at the human food chain and the use of antibiotics in chickens. There is also this concern that the chicken gut might be a repository of antibiotic resistance genes that actually find their way into the human food chain, find their way into our gut. Well, we're very, we've been very grateful that the BBSOC have supported this project. It obviously speaks to the BBSRC's interest in food security, uh, in healthy food and, and avoiding pathogens getting into the human food chain. There are implications obviously for model organism biology and how the chicken develops and so forth. And we're also, we also have a biotechnological spin in that, you know, as I say, we have potential to, to get enzymes uh, that would be useful coming out of this community.